Lesson 35, Jesus Does All Things Well. In today's lesson, we shall see how Jesus turns the complaints of the Pharisees back against them by exposing their hypocrisy. We shall see how the pleas of a woman are answered when Jesus cast out a demon from her daughter and how he wondrously heals a man who was deaf and could not speak properly. The people were right when they said that Jesus did all things well. The Pharisees had come to Galilee from Jerusalem to see if they could find some fault with Jesus. They noticed that his disciples did not follow the ritual washings that they themselves practiced before they ate, and so they complained to Jesus about this. The Pharisees had developed many customs and rituals that were not given in the Bible, and they expected that every faithful Jew should follow their traditions. Jesus did not tolerate their legalism and used the occasion to point out their own hypocrisy. He explained that it was not what goes into the man that makes him unclean, but that which comes out of him. Now Jesus is not saying that we should not wash our hands before we eat, for that is just common sense for maintaining our health. What he is saying is that if the Pharisees think that all their elaborate ritual washings could make them clean in a ceremonial sense rather than in a purely hygienic sense, then they were grossly mistaken. God has designed our bodies in such a way that our digestive system absorbs the good nutrients of the food we eat and discards what is not healthy for us. This is a wonderful provision of the Creator in the design of our bodies and protects us in many ways from things which could harm us. Of course we still need to be sensible about what we eat or drink so that we do not abuse the liberties we have been given for eating and drinking. For instance, smoking tobacco or ingesting alcohol into our systems is clearly not healthy and eventually will do irreparable damage. Jesus told the Pharisees that they were nullifying the scriptures through their traditions. They had a tradition which allowed them to say to their parents that all that would have been used to help them had been given to God and that would excuse them from helping their parents when they were in need. The Bible, however, teaches we are to honor our parents, and that means looking after their needs should they become unable to look after themselves. Jesus provided a long list of sins which find their source in the heart of man, including lust, pride, envy, greed, and hatred. This should remind us not to put the blame on others or on our circumstances when we do evil, because Jesus said these things are not inflicted upon us from the outside, but are driven by the sin nature within us. This is why each of us need Jesus to be our Savior, because while we may not act out these sins openly, yet their potential is still within our hearts, because at our core we are sinners and condemned. When Jesus went to the region of Tyre and Sidon, he tried to hide himself from the people, perhaps wanting time to rest, but his fame was such that he could not be hidden. A Gentile woman came to Jesus, pleading with him to cast out a demon from her daughter. We always see Jesus willing to offer healing and help to those who come to him, but in this case we are surprised to learn that Jesus at first seems reluctant to offer help to the woman. He said to her that it was not good to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. He meant by this metaphor that his present ministry and work were for the benefit of the Jews and not for the Gentiles, so it would be inappropriate to give away the blessings of Israel to the Gentiles. In fact, the metaphor really was quite demeaning since it likened Gentiles to dogs which were considered unclean animals. The woman was desperate for help, which made her free from all pride, and so Jesus' reference to dogs did not hinder her or offend her. She simply replied that even the dogs eat crumbs from the table. She demonstrated great faith in Jesus to heal, 
and great persistence, knowing that he alone had the power to cast out the demon. Her faith and persistence were rewarded, and the Lord Jesus said that she could go, for her daughter had been freed from the demon. Perhaps Jesus was not actually reluctant to heal the woman's daughter, but he wanted to test and prove her faith. Sometimes we would like the Lord to provide immediate answers to our request, but he may delay us so that our faith will be strengthened. When we come to Jesus in desperation and humility, as this woman did, then we are sure to receive our request. Jesus never denies sincere faith and request made in the will of God. Jesus traveled back to the Sea of Galilee and some people met him pleading with him to heal a man who was deaf and also could not speak properly. Speech is developed through the sense of hearing and is another wonderful blessing from our Creator to help us manage in life and communicate effectively with others. To be deaf is a very difficult affliction to have for it isolates a person from communicating with most people and makes it very challenging for them to manage in any work or relationship. Try to imagine what it would be like if you could never hear music or another voice or any sounds at all and how this would isolate you from what is going on in the world around you. Jesus is the Creator who gave us ears to hear and gave us the ability to speak and know language and he alone was able to heal this man. In this miracle, Jesus chose to heal by touching the man and spitting and touching his tongue. He commanded the man's ears to be opened, and the man's hearing and speech were restored. Normally it takes years of practice to perfect language skills, but Jesus did it instantaneously for this man. Today we have learned the wonderful care and design that God has built into our bodies to help us manage in this world and enjoy the blessings he provides. Today it would be good if we all took time to stop for a moment and thank the Lord for our healthy bodies and all the remarkable gifts that our bodies have been given, such as taste, feeling, hearing, sight, and smell. The abilities to enjoy and digest food, lungs to breathe in air, and keep our heart pumping, and a mind to think and consider the wonders of the God who created us and sent his Son to redeem our souls. Why not surrender your life to Christ today by calling out to him in faith to save your soul? And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Mark chapter 7 verse 37